so now let's discuss cross aldol condensation we have discussed self condensations the dimerization reactions of a carbonyl compound but aldol condensation is not restricted to the condensation of same carbonyl compounds it can occur between different aldehydes or ketones or it can occur between one aldehyde and one ketone so when two different carbonyl compounds they react in presence of a dilute base that reaction is called cross aldol condensation or mixed aldol condensation and such condensation can give a mixture of products for example if you take ethanol or acetaldehyde and propanol and when they react in presence of a dilute base we will have four different products overall a mixture of four different products so these are the four different products formed when ethanol and propanol react in presence of a dilute base either one of them can form the enolate ion so when enolate ion of ethanol attacks the propanol we will have a product that is 3 hydroxy pentanol and that is different from the one formed by the attack of enolate ion of propanol on the ethanol here i have skipped the formation of enolate ion and also self condensation reaction occurs self condensation of ethanol and we will have 3 hydroxy butanol self condensation of propanol and we will have 3 hydroxy 2 methyl pentanol so a mixture of four different products that is why selection of the reactants selection of the compounds must be carefully done so cross aldol condensation is useful when one of the carbonyl compounds does not contain any alpha hydrogen so it cannot form the enolate ion and therefore cannot undergo self condensation reaction for example formaldehyde and acetaldehyde formaldehyde cannot enolize because it doesn't contain any alpha hydrogen but it is too reactive it tends to give extra unwanted reactions and acetaldehyde it can form the enolate ion and that enolate ion will attack the electrophilic carbonyl group of the formaldehyde so what happens when they react in presence of a dilute base so as the acetaldehyde contains alpha hydrogen atoms so the base is going to attack one of the alpha hydrogen atoms to form the resonance stabilized enolate ion in the second step the enolate ion which is a strong nucleophile attacks the electrophilic carbonyl group of the formaldehyde to form the alkoxide ion and in the third step that alkoxide ion is protonated by the water formed in the first step but this is not the final product it is the first aldol product and as the product still contains alpha hydrogen atoms so it further reacts with formaldehyde so this is the second round of the reaction this is the first aldol product and again the base is going to grab one of the alpha hydrogen atoms of the first aldol product and again the formation of enolate ion which will attack the electrophilic carbonyl group to form the alkoxide ion and in the last step this alkoxide ion is protonated by water to form the second aldol product this product further reacts because it still contains the alpha hydrogen atom and the same way reaction occurs and we will have the third aldol product which is this this is the third aldol product now what happens a fourth molecule of formaldehyde reacts with the hydroxide ion and then that reduces the third aldol product and finally we will get our final product which is penta erythritol this is the formula of penta erythritol and this is the final product 
This penta erythritol is highly symmetrical. The structure of penta erythritol is this. If you take acetone instead of acetaldehyde, then reaction steps are same. Reaction mechanism is also same. And the first aldol product will be this, but this is not the final product as it still contains alpha hydrogen atoms. So it further reacts with formaldehyde. So we must have two conditions for cross aldol condensation to work well. First, one of the carbonyl compounds must be capable of enolization. And second, the other carbonyl compound must be incapable of enolization, but be more electrophilic than its enolizable partner. So that's all for today.